show you a great achievement on Intel HD graphics. That is, with Core 1 HD VD on Mobi J HD Intel HD graphics, you can support the 3D display on 3D TV. That is really cool. And uh, through the 3D TV with a bundle of 3D glasses, you guys can enjoy the 3D display image. Check this out. All right, now we have connected Core 1 HD VD to a Samsung 55 inch 3D LED TV. And uh, because the Core 1 HD VD, the integrated Intel HD graphics is capable to support, you know, two 1080p, two 1080p Blu-ray content playback simultaneously. So through the HDMI and to the 3D TV, it is capable to, you know, playback 3D content. Of course, we have to leverage the, you know, checkable mode on the 3D TV. Okay, now let's check out the checkable mode on 3D TV settings. Like this, we choose the 3D settings. And now we choose to, you know, we select the checkable mode. Okay, now we have entered into the, you know, the menu of the Blu-ray content disc. And uh, you can see that right now it is 2D mode. And uh, we're testing with a Cyberlink Power DVD 10 Ultra. So you can see that after we enable the 3D button here, and then the words will become the 3D mode. That is cool. Now I can see that the 3D display looks really cool. So amazing, right? And this is also the world's first 3D demo on the Intel HD graphics. Alright, let's start to measure the signal to noise ratio on Core 1 HT. And as you can see today, we're going to use it, the audio precision to measure the uh, what we call the uh, SNR, the signal to noise ratio, and the actually the audio precision is is a quite a you know precise machine to measure the this kind of signal. I mean the signal to noise ratio. All right, let's take a look at this one. Okay, it's the audio precision. Alright, before we start to measure the dynamic range, the audio dynamic range, that is the also what we call the signal to noise ratio, we have to set the full scale voltage of the 0 dB, and this is actually, you know, for the reference voltage setting. Okay, now here comes the dynamic range. The SNR is around 105 dB. That's quite cool. Okay, the final result comes out as 105 dB for the dynamic range audio. And let's take a look at the other page. And uh, on this page, it shows the full range frequency from the, you know, 20 hertz to 20 kHz. And um, as you can see on the graph, it shows that, you know, it's pretty stable at 105 dB. So the signal to noise ratio quality is, you know, quite nice. Okay, regarding the wireless performance, today we're going to hear is the you know semi iconic lab for the wireless throughput test. Okay, check this out. Okay, that is cool. Here you can find that we're in the semi anchored lab. Here we can see our machine here is a Core 100 HTBD here. And uh, you can also find that access point is here. Okay, so we're going to test the wireless throughput right now.
Okay, here we are in the child water throughput test program, and here we are in the test setup menu. And you can find that endpoint one and endpoint two here and here. Okay, the endpoint one is the core one to HDBD, and the core endpoint two is the access point. So we're going to start testing with the TX throughput. Check this out. All right, here comes out the final test result for the TX and RX throughput. The average speed is actually 189 megabit per second. So that is really fast. Because as you know, the core 100 HT series is with um, Wi-Fi AO2.11N. It's 2T2R spec. So according to the 2T2R spec, um, the speed should be around 300 megabit per second. But it's actually, you know, never reached this kind of high speed. So 189 megabit per second is, you know, really fast. Comparing with the other machine like um, the 1T1R machine, and the speed it will be only, you know, 150 megabit per second. And the actual test speed will be around only 50 to 60 megabit, megabit per second. So the wireless throughput of the Core 100 HT series is really fast.